On this episode, we go to floor 12, have a hardcore Eagles fan, and I get a little Dear Abby-ish. This is Gary Vay Nurchuk, and this is episode 143 of the Ask Gary V Show. I'm on floor 12. Woke up some people. I know the Eagles thing is coming for Price. I know that's coming this whole episode. I'm actually pissed I sat in front of him. Uh, look for my official Jets Eagles prediction. By the way, India, I'm 2 0 on my official uh, predictions uh, on, on this season. So uh, I'll be coming Friday. I mean, at some level, some of you are gonna start betting heavily on my skill set here. On, I really understand this Jets team. Uh, good mood, excited to be on 12. You can, give, you can stand up and give a little 12 action. Uh, and uh, floor 12. Floor, floor 12 is loud, just the way I like it. Uh, all right, that's about it. Uh, super excited about the comments on the street. I will be doing more of that. I almost did that, but I decided to go with 12 today. Gonna mix it up a little bit here as we are now getting to the mid 150s area, which is a pretty epic feat. Uh, appreciate all the statement of the days. You might have noticed uh, I'm engaging more on YouTube. Uh, finally put it put the app on the front of my home screen and have stayed in, consistently signed in and have figured out my cadence on engaging on YouTube, which excites me because so many of you consume the show on, on the tube. And so I will be uh, not just reading, but engaging a little bit more there, so Facebook and that. Also, a lot of you may not realize this, I am constantly on uh, in a Twitter environment. And so for a lot of you that either don't have a Twitter account or not as uh, using it as often, feel free to ping me there. A, a lot of engagement with the Vayner Nation there. So India, let's get into the show. Yeah, D-Rock, you were slow. D-Rock was slow. Clinton asks, were you ever reckless with any of your businesses? No, I don't think I've ever been reckless uh, with my businesses, hence why they've been uh, successful. I think the only reckless thing I've ever done which has caused me non-successful ventures is uh, trying to bite off more than I can chew. Uh, Sometimes I'm doing way too many things, including now, including always. So there's a level of recklessness within it, but uh, on an overall collective, it's not reckless because it's a net-net score game and I win in business. Um, And so, no, I don't, I don't find myself to be super reckless. Uh, I think I'm very much on the offense, um, but there's a, there's a level of practicality. I'm very P&L driven, profit and loss, that means cash flow, understanding how not to put myself out of business. Uh, uh, I think I leave a lot of profit on the table each year. Uh, I, I definitely could have a lot more take home money from VaynerMedia, for example, in the last three years, um, but I continue to invest in my businesses. Some may think that's not reckless, but maybe leaving something on the table. I look, on, look at it as long-term investing, uh, not worrying about short-term cash. Um, so, no, I don't think I'm a reckless businessman. Um, that's it. No. Trouty sent me a link. Trouty? We put Trouty on the show? Yeah. Jesus. The Kardashians are starting their own website. Jesus. <laughs> Trouty, okay. He wants to know. Trouty asks, first Glenn Beck and now Kim Kardashian, are subscription media sites the next celeb frontier and will you? The answer is yes. Will I have one? I, maybe. You know, maybe. I mean, that's a really interesting question. I'd be really fascinated. I know Stefan's holding up the scope right now. I'd be really fascinated if I decided to paywall the Ask Gary B show or my content, what would happen? My intuition is that I would lose 90% of my audience, but the 10% that were the most passionate would find a rationale uh, to pay for it. I do believe paywalls are an intriguing play. If you look at somebody like Howard Stern went to a radio paywall, I think until he went back out into uh, America's Got Talent, he almost disappeared off the face of the earth. He made a lot of money, but his brand took a hit. You know, for example, I'm gonna assume a lot of you, and a lot of you, uh, which are both one and the same, are gonna buy a lot of Ask Gary Vee books or go to some of my speeches where this is a jab, the content is free, but it's a gateway to brand equity that then kind of allows me to, uh, to monetize on the back end. Um, 
I do think that there's a huge opportunity for paywall subscription based. Uh, I think there's a lot of money in it. I do think a lot of people are gonna go that route. I think you're gonna see moves by YouTube. I think as we have a long tail of micro celebrity, more people will go there. And so, Trouty, I do think there's a frontier in that. Um, it is something I debate doing. Uh, I tend to believe more in the fact that I'm not a Beck or a Kardashian, uh, so I don't have as much equity. I haven't, I, I think, at super scale, when you have broad awareness, you have a better chance of having meaningful scale in who will pay. I think there's more upside in me continuing to provide disproportionate value on this show and my engagement to keep building up that equity. I'm looking for that depth. Uh, I don't have that level of width. Um, but yeah, I think it's a very good business model um, and I do think that people will pay. I do think you know, eight, 10, 12, 20 dollars a month for getting what you really want is not out of the question if you have a lot of affinity for any content, um, sports, individuals, and, uh, and definitely celebrities. And so, yes, and, and maybe. Stefan, what were they saying on the scope about uh, that? Somebody said paywall sucks if you put everything into it. Other people said that they were leaving the show. They didn't want to watch now because they want to watch the show. They're literally so, leaving the scope. Yeah, some people. Because they want to watch it later. I love that. <laughs> um, from Bill via email. Bill via email. Yeah. Oh, we're taking email questions now? Well, I, I don't think, think we should open that can of worms to India. Well, well, I forwarded to you, so I guess that's my fault. Not okay, well, understood. Alex likes this one. Okay, go ahead. Bill says, my girlfriend of four years and I just broke up and I'm feeling really depressed. For the last four years, I've had someone to talk to about literally everything in my life, and now that's gone. It's hard to believe that a four-year relationship ended in 20 minutes. I was saving and planning on proposing to her in the next few months, and now that's not going to happen. I feel empty. I feel a void. I feel blank. Got any advice on how to pick the pieces of my life back up? Jesus. <laughs> you couldn't have warned me this was coming? Um, well... You know, I mean, if this was my buddy, the first thing I would desperately try to do is, I always feel like the quickest cure for heartbreak off a long-term relationship is a scummy move of hooking up with as many girls as possible. Uh, I think it helps in a weird way. Uh, I really do, I think, I think, I really do think it helps. So I think, you know, there's, there's only meaningful relationships and then kind of like the vanity of relationships when you break this down and so he's coming from a meaningful place and I think the vanity of it all, like the one, the one micro positive that guys cliche will think about in this moment is like, well I can hook up with chicks and I think you have to go all in on that. Um, that will last for about three weeks to three months of fun and, and is, a, is a softener. I, I think you need to recognize that you got off easy. I, I don't know if it's Bronx Tale or one of those gangster movies where the guy owes the kid, tw the kid owes the kid 20 bucks and he goes and chases him and then the gangster grabs him and goes, you got off easy? You, got, you found out he was a scum bucket for 20 bucks? You know, brother, I gotta be honest with you, I think you got off easy. I mean, it's a hell of a lot better that you didn't propose, that, you, that she was, I give her credit. She, a lot of people, a lot of people mail it in and get married to people that they ultimately aren't fully 100% infatuated in love and for full life and I think people are mailing in. Now that divorce is so easy, uh, I think that people just kind of do it. And I actually think in a weird way you got lucky and I actually give her a lot of credit uh, that she, after a four and a half year relationship, had the backbone and the guts to go through a tough process I'm sure for her as well. And so. I, I actually think you look at this as a positive. I'm an optimist. It's easy for me to say. Um, but I think at some level, uh, you, you take a step back and recognize as much as it hurts now, it would have been tougher and hurt more to unwind after marriage or what's so difficult for so many after having children, which creates such a different dynamic and makes it extremely difficult. And so, you know, there's not much I can say um, that's gonna make it feel a whole lot better. Maybe just talking it out and getting it on, the question on the show. The email was asking for it to be on the show? Or were we just taking somebody's random? Oh, it just, it came in, okay. Um, so, that's it, man. I, I think go hook up with some chicks to ease the pain for a few minutes and then, uh, and then take a step back and recognize it's a, it's a positive. Um, and, uh, and then, 
and try to learn from the experience and, and find out the qualities you really loved in her and try to replicate them in, in the next relationship you have and you know maybe even find the things that you didn't like as much in her and try to close the gap and find somebody you love even more. You like that? Yeah. Well, thanks, India. JC asks, Gary, is Medium the new Tumblr? What happened to Tumblr anyway? Is Medium the new Tumblr? I think Tumblr is a more creative outlet uh, visually, uh, whereas Medium I think is a more creative outlet uh, in written form. Uh, Tumblr was bought by Yahoo, and anytime you're bought by a very big media company, it's going to uh, slow down its innovation. They need to integrate. It's still a very big app. You go look in the Apple you know, top charts, it's still well entrenched in the top 100, uh, top 125. Um, I, so I think they're totally different. I, I think um, uh, I think they're both very viable communication platforms that matter in society. I, I have the benefit personally of being an investor in both, uh, early investor in Tumblr and in Medium. Uh, big fan of both. Uh, we spent a lot of time, you and I, jamming in Medium. Um, so. I don't think it's the new Tumblr. Uh, I think Tumblr's still there, what happened to Tumblr. I think it's a different animal now. And I think uh, depending on how you want to communicate to the world, uh, I, for example, I think Tumblr has been a tremendous anonymous platform for people where they don't have to be themselves and they can have pseudo names or pseudo context or you know, hotsaucemaster.tumblr.com is a place where you don't have to be you know, necessarily your name and you can communicate to the world and I think that's really worked for a lot of teenagers and a lot of youth. Uh, medium, people tend to be themselves on that platform and has been a gateway for them to be discovered as great writers or interesting writers so they're different. Uh, and that's my two cents on those two platforms and if you're watching this show or listening to the show and you haven't played with either platform lately, I think one of the great things about this show is is not just listening or watching or being entertained, uh, is to take action and so let's do a little homework assignment for episode, uh, what are we, 143? What? Yeah, 143. Uh, I challenge you, Vayner Nation, to go out and post three things on Tumblr if you haven't in years, if you've never have, and to write three articles on Medium if you haven't in a while or you've never had. I think that to me is the energy as we get closer to episode 200 that I want to start doing, which is I want to create more practitioners and the amount of people that are listening and watching to this show right now that have never created content for either platform is stunningly high, and I want to motivate you right this second to go out and do it because you will learn from it and it will make you stronger and better uh, and, uh, and that's something I really want to do out of this show, not just entertain. You like that, right? That was a good little spin. I'm on fire here. Dear Abby, practitioner at scale, shit's going down. 143. <laughs> yeah, last one. Noel asks, how would you best deal with vulturous, unethical investors? Would you put them on blast? Um... Yeah, I mean, if, if they're truly vulturous or unethical investors, I'm more than willing to put them on blast, but something about this question makes me also want to say, make sure that is true. Uh, the level of thin skinness in young, first-time business people, let me just say this for the record. The audacity that is running rampant in startup land that you're a 22 to 24 year old entrepreneur with zero proven record and you're going to the world and you want them to give you one million dollars at a six million dollar valuation on your idea pisses me the fuck off. And so, uh, the answer is yes to both. I would equally put an entrepreneur that is out of their goddamn mind and has not contextualized the insanity of the marketplace that we live in as I would as an investor who is being vulturous or unethical and doing the wrong thing. But please recognize sitting in this ecosystem as I am, I have had a lot of kids come to me and say, can you believe this other investment, other investor that's part of our deal and when I look at it, it is very normal. I would even say 10 years ago, soft negotiating, but by the thin skinness of our society right now, feels aggressive to this 23 year old idea, Ricky. Uh, and so I would say, absolutely, I would put them on blast. But boy, would I double check that I don't look like an asshole 
five years from now for crying about somebody just business negotiating and I didn't like it because I've been so used to the world giving me eighth place trophies and mom doing my homework and having no repercussions for anything for the first 22 years of my life. Good show, feeling pretty good. 12 brought me some, would you stop with that bull crap? I mean you guys are 0 and 2. Your team's a disaster. Maybe, I, I love, you should love them, but maybe, maybe you should focus on your work instead of putting up the football in the background. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> word, word. I hate Eagle fans this week. Uh, uh, thanks for watching the show, I'm really feeling it. Yesterday uh, was a big Jewish holiday, so I was supposed to be checked out, but obviously I was catching up on reading a lot of the comments and I appreciate it, the energy is real. Uh, and uh, and uh, I like it. And so Lurkers, this would be a good time to come out and say hello. Uh, Floor 12, thank you for your uh, hospitality. Statements of the day really mean a lot to me, so critique the show, tell me what you think about Floor 12, tell me what you think about that last answer. Uh, and, uh, and that's a scoop, you keep asking questions, I'll keep answering them.